Have you ever thought about selling at a boutique mall? We did, and we'll tell you all about it right now. What is up? Welcome back. Do you like to do a build it or make it? So do we. And we have new videos each week. This week, we're setting up some retail space to sell our laser products. You might sell your products at craft shows or online through social media, but have you considered selling at a boutique mall? This week in our video, we're gonna share with you what it is, why we chose to sell our products there, and how we set up our new booth space in a new mall. You might be thinking, what is a boutique mall? I know I was. A boutique mall is a mall or a collection of shops under one roof. Each vendor rents a portion of the building or their space, and they get to sell their products in their space. So our space is six foot by 10 foot and we'll set up essentially a stationary craft show booth at this boutique mall. There are lots of different shops in this mall. Vendors sell all kinds of products, such as pet items, gift items, home decor items, clothing, shoes, baby clothes, even non-perishable foods. Lots of items, each vendor gets to pick their own product and gets to decorate their booth in their own style. And we have seen many different styles, farmhouse, beach theme, skull and crossbones theme, sports themes. You get to decorate it any way you want. You're thinking, why would I want to sell at a boutique mall? What are some of the pros and cons? How do I even get started? Well, first, there's high foot traffic. Boutiques attract a steady flow of customers, providing you with the opportunities to showcase and sell your products. They also have a targeted audience. If you've chosen the correct location and the correct type of mall, which would may not be an antique mall if you're not selling antiques, or um, maybe we we looked at once a market bazaar that sold <laughs> everything. They sold everything. <laughs> you can get a full bottle of 1960s Coke. You can get a 1980s push push button phone from the kitchen, <laughs> or you could get a Pokemon card from like yesterday. Now we did look at that mall and decided that's probably not the best place to sell our door hangers. So if you have a targeted audience, then you're gonna have the perfect flow of customers who are gonna be interested in your type of items. In our case, it's door hangers. And the painted tree or a boutique mall is the perfect place to sell our door hangers. Boutique malls have a professional setting. Selling at a boutique mall lends credibility to your brand and products as customers perceive them to be a higher quality compared to the mass produced items that you'd find on like Tinu. Networking opportunities. You may have the chance to meet and connect with other vendors, possibly leading to collaborations, partnerships, or other valuable insights into the industry. A boutique mall offers minimal overhead costs. Not having to set up your own space and pay your own electric and your own rent and water and everything, a boutique mall will cover all of that for you. You just have to pay your booth fee. A lot less overhead to get started. And lastly, marketing. A boutique mall, like the Painted Tree, provides advertising and special events through the year. Open houses for Christmas and holidays, ladies' nights, sidewalk sales. Streaming commercials, television commercials. I mean, you'll even see them on HGTV. They provide the advertising to get foot traffic into the mall. Those all sounded great. Those are nice, great pros. But what about some of the cons? Some of the things that you might consider is commission fees. Some boutique malls charge commission fees or require a percentage of your sales as rent. While this arrangement may provide access to a prime location, it can eat into your profits. You also might have limited control over the aspect of the store layout, display placement, or operating hours, which will impact the visibility and presentation of our door hangers and your products. Another thing to consider is more competition. Sharing space with other vendors means that you're competing for customers' attention. You'll need to ensure that the products stand out amidst a sea of other offerings. Seasonal fluctuation. Just like with craft shows, depending on the location, the clientele, you may experience seasonal fluctuations in your foot traffic and sales, requiring careful planning and adaptation. You know those J months all die, and it's the same at these boutique malls. And last, you're dependent on the mall's success. Your sales may be influenced by the overall success and popularity of the boutique mall, and if the mall experiences a downturn or a closure, it will affect your business. 
Now that we've looked at all the pros and cons and we still decided that we're gonna sell at a boutique mall, we need to start thinking about our booth itself. Our booth is six foot by 10 foot and we need to go ahead and utilize every inch of that space and make it eye catching. First thing to consider is a welcoming entrance. You wanna create an inviting entrance so folks will wanna stop and walk into your booth and look at the products that you have to offer. And because we have limited space, we're gonna utilize our vertical space. We're gonna take our booth and make everything go up. We're gonna use shelves, racks. We're gonna use our display racks and our little pegs to get everything up off the ground and, and in a vertical format. We also wanna feature our best sellers. We're gonna make sure that as you round that corner, because we're on a corner booth, you're looking straight at our hot sellers. So we're putting our beach pleases out there. We're putting our hope you like dogs, all of our most popular sellers are gonna be right at eye, eye level. We need to create visual interest. We need to separate our booth from every other booth inside that boutique mall. We're gonna to try to give ours some kind of outdoor feel. We're gonna make our, our product look at home. And we're gonna make sure that we have clear pricing. As folks come into your booth, they wanna be able to know how much your product is and what it's gonna cost them. They don't wanna to have to be hunting and pecking and looking for how much this thing costs. This is also a great opportunity to introduce special discounts or offers. We're not offering any special discounts, but we do do workshops. So we are gonna post a big retractable display touting our story, giving a little bit about us and inviting people to come in for workshops. And lastly, something to consider on those event days where they're hosting uh, vendors into the building and asking you to kind of man your booth and share your product, share your story, you might want to offer demonstrations. So for us, you know, we have that F1, which is a portable laser, and we can take that straight to the craft booth and the craft show and then showcase how we can personalize ornaments right on the spot. Now that we have all of the details and know what we want our booth to look like, it's time to gather all of our supplies. So we're gonna go do a little shopping and that turned out to be quite an adventure for us. We started at Hobby Lobby and didn't find the accents I was looking for. We went over to Home Depot and didn't find exactly what I was looking for. Went to Lowe's, we bought one piece, back to Home Depot, a different Home Depot, bought something else. A different and a, Lowe's. <laughs> and bought something else. A different, a different, different Lowe's. <laughs> at a garden section. Taco break. <laughs> so what we chose to purchase to create this outdoor feel. Since we're selling door hangers and I can't actually build a front porch display right at my booth, I do want to give you the feel of a front porch or that these belong outdoors or on your front door. So we're using peel and stick wallpaper. This, this is so easy to install and so easy to take down. When we're done with our booth, we'll be able to pull this down afterwards. I mean, it was really easy to install and it lined up beautifully. It was pretty easy. I you yeah, can see I did it myself. Yeah, it's seamless. We also decided during our discussions that, uh, during our shopping actually at Hobby Lobby, right? We decided we wanted a hedge wall, um, using a boxwood hedge wall. And we found this retractable uh, trellis that we can expand and it looks like a whole hedge wall behind our booth. And that was super easy to yeah, install. I just want to give the essence of bush. <laughs> And then most of the booths have some sort of flooring. They may use peel and stick flooring. They may use a rug. We chose to continue with that outdoor theme and use a grass rug uh, to give it that outdoor feel. So now we have grass, we have brick, we have bushes. I mean, it's practically a front porch. Now we intended to build a pergola, but we ran out of time running between Lowe's, Home Depot, and Hobby <laughs> Lobbies. <laughs> So we had, we ended up buying just a grill gazebo. And that was strictly for um, eye-catching visual appeal. We were going for the vertical space, so it is a tall element. You are gonna round the corner and say, what is this? What is going on in this booth? So is it there is a barbecue going, happening? <laughs> it is going to make you stop and look. But one of the challenges that we ran into was the lighting. Well, it made it dark. Once we added the grill gazebo, it got real dark. So we needed to find some lights that would continue with that barbecue feel. So I was good with putting out those Edison bulbs. So we put those around the outside. And then but what? They, they <laughs> just, 
it just didn't have the light about it. It needed to feel outdoorsy. Even though I'm underneath this shade, it needs to feel like the light is hitting these signs. So we went and got some more lights. We purchased some under the cabinet lighting and put those on the rails and shine those back towards the sign. And that helped fill up the light in that space. So it's still gonna be bright and it's still gonna catch your eye. Now you might notice that we only have one of each sign displayed. Typically we would display multiples of each sign. We would use pegs, but all of our pegs are at the other boutique mall. So we need to make some new pegs, but not to worry. We will add those into the uh, what is it, pegboard display standards that we have so that we can hang multiples of each. Are you selling anything at a boutique mall? Let us know down below. Give us any tips and tricks that you might have. Otherwise, big thanks to all of our patrons. We love you guys. That is the best way to support this channel. And I am about out of time. This place is closing up. We gotta go. You gotta go. We will see you next week. We'll do it, build it, and make it again.